Hi, Olivia here from Walks and Cameras. So we have a slightly different video for you today. If you want to learn some new tips and tricks on how to film creative shots for weddings, events, or even commercial videos, then keep on watching. These tricks will mainly apply to Sony users, and I will be referring to the Sony A7S III, which is the camera I use to shoot all the official wedding content in this video. The B-roll video is shot with the Sony ZV-E1, which is what I'm currently filming on, which can I add is a brilliant camera of content creators that want that more cinematic control but with a lot of advanced video features. But today we're focusing on the Sony a7S III and the new 24-70 f2.8 Mark II lens, G Master of course. If you want to check the specs out for both the a7S III and the 24-70 lens, then head to our website in the description box to have a browse. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer is that some of these tips and tricks I learned from Kate and Brent, who are two very talented photographers and videographers from By Lumiere. I think the best way to refer to these pointers is by dissecting what I have already filmed. So the first tip slash trick is to trust that your camera will track focus. Obviously this only applies to cameras with this technology, but for this instance I'm referring to the A7S III. This camera has the ability to track focus when in AFC, which is continuous autofocus. This is brilliant for shots where you either have moving subjects or want to add movement into your shot yourself. So the example I'm going to show you is where the bride and groom are walking through the diner towards the camera. This typically would be known as a tracking shot where usually you would either have a gimbal or a dolly for more film related projects. But for this shoot, I shot totally handheld, trusting the IBIS and the AF tracking in this camera. I tapped on the bride's face on the LCD display so the tracking was activated. I then communicated with the couple that I was ready to go and off we went. Because I can trust the AF, I focused on being steady and obviously watching where I was walking as I was walking backwards. That leads us perfectly onto the next tip. IBIS. The A7S III has a brilliant IBIS that almost makes it look like you're shooting on a gimbal. Having a camera with good IBIS, I would say, is important for content creators and videographers because one, not everyone can afford all the kit at once and sometimes might have to film handheld most of the time and two, sometimes you'll be on shoots where you want as little kit as possible, especially if you're a hybrid shooter and shoot both stills and video, which this camera is perfectly capable of doing. The example with the tracking shot before is a great example of how effective the IBIS alone can be, but here is another example. The A7S III is brilliant in low light with its 12 megapixel sensor. This is great for freelance uh, videographers because sometimes you don't get a chance to wreck your locations and analyze what the lighting is like within that location. But because you can trust this camera in low light due to its back illuminated XMAR R sensor and the Bion's XR image processor, difficult lighting situations will be less of a concern. During this shoot, we filmed indoors where there was very minimal light, natural light, and then outdoors where there was very harsh lighting due to the sun being out. So we can trust this camera indoors in low light, but what about outdoors? Surely exposure would be clipping in lighting scenarios like this. The simple answer is a neutral density filter, which we have here. We sell brilliant ND filters and variable ND filters that I personally use all the time. The one that I use is the Promaster HGX Prime 82 um, millimeter variable ND filter. This is brilliant, I absolutely love it. So I've got it here and you can just see there. Brilliant. ND filters allow you to have more of a creative input on your shots and also allow you to better control your exposure. This means you can shoot wide open to achieve that gorgeous, beautiful bokeh or baka or however you like to pronounce it, whilst also exposing your shots correctly. If you want me to do a separate video on ND filters and how to correctly use them, then let me know in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to do so. Next is something I have recently learned off Brent from Bilumia, which honestly blew my mind. 
the simple things, eh? <laughs> so to start off with, you need to change your AF on custom button to AF MF selector toggle and also change the AF transition speed to two and the AF subject shift sensitivity to three. This trick is to film a shot with a pull focus look to it. So maybe a reveal of a location or the bride and groom or a product or anything. Once you've decided what shot it is that you want to pull focus to, then tap on the AF on button, so you are in manual focus. Completely knock the focus out, so the shot is completely out of focus. Then you want to start recording, and then when you're ready to reveal whatever it is that you want to focus on, then tap the AF on button again to flick it into AFC. This will pull focus to the subject within the focus point with a smooth transition. I'll admit, it took me a few tries to perfect this. You might have to alter the transition speed depending on what shot it is that you want. Lastly, if you've got a powerful computer that can edit with vlog footage, then I highly recommend shooting in some form of vlog. Now this is up to the individual, everyone is different. The standard color profile in Sony cameras is nice enough alone, but if you want to save a bit more dynamic range in your highlights and shadows, then log is the best option. This means saving detail in wedding dresses and shots in low light and so on. But obviously with log footage comes a lot of time color grading and editing in post-production. It's really just about balance and understanding what you and your client want in the final project. And a quick one, get a variety of shots. Don't be scared to get close up. Show the detail and create a story to their day. This is something that will polish off your finished product. So that's it guys. If you've enjoyed this style of video, then let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to note down some more tips and tricks and film a video for you guys. So like I said before, if you want to check out the Sony a7S III, the 24-70mm lens and the ProMaster ND filters, then head to the description box and I'll pop some links in there. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe and comment any feedback or videos that you want to see in the future. Until next time, I will see you all soon.